computer. All right, beautiful, Hi. Natalie. Hi, good afternoon, it's good to see you. I missed you. It's only been a week and I miss you already. It means something. Um, so three, three questions or three areas that came surface to my awareness when uh, I was getting ready for our, our talk. The first one is your experience with psychedelic. Cool. Uh, the second one is uh, your interview with Jason Reza Giorgiani. Yep. Um, and what happened in this interview. So when we get to the second point, I'll ask more. Cool. And the third one is what are you up to and how do we bring all this juicy, powerful, uh, potent um, knowledge, which in it for itself is energy, is conscious, is alive, is how do we bring this to become, how do we offer it actually? Such mm. that it becomes, how do we offer the knowledge that I, I, we have on your stimulation channel and, and in general, and, and additional researchers and speakers and interviewers, uh, like the theory of everything with Kurt and so forth. How do we take all this incredible knowledge, synthesize it, synthesize it and, and make it available for global use for social transformation? Nice, you totally. So Okay, totally, but that's, that's uh, like, I have so much here more to say, but so I, I won't go into the details. Totally in my ballpark. Totally great. in my ballpark, yeah. And, and um, well, let's, let's, let's blast off. So yeah, first, first, off. first, first question is entheogen use. Yes. So um, <clears throat> it's important to first recognize why I use the word entheogens instead of psychedelics. Psychedelics means mind manifesting. Entheogens means unleashing God or the divine from within. And so it's very important to recognize what are these plant medicines? What are all these mystic traditions? What are all of them pointing to? It's for you to recognize the kingdom of God within you, for you to unlock that sense of love, light, unity that everything already is, but that you forgot and fell asleep to that. And so my experience probably about a dozen or so times with entheogens over the last probably about half decade or so, everything from 5-MeO-DMT to LSD to magic mushrooms. And it's been incredible. The most neuroscientific simple way to explain it is that it's just a liberation of all contracted energy. That's it. It's just a liberation of contracted energy, contracted identity, contracted conditioning, contracted feelings of separation, because what you're doing is you're enabling all of these novel neural connectomics to be what they, what basically magic mushrooms are, what they are, these mycorrhizal networks underground, they're, they're mind blowing. It's just one cohesive underground sharing of resources 95% of plants use fungi to share resources underground. Just let that sink in for a second. This multi-billion year old intelligence is signaling to us that, hey, humans, there is no such thing as separation. None. Zero. Zero. It's completely imagined. It's completely fabricated. It's something that you have as a contracted energy bundled into and what is self or God realization through, through concentration and meditation and self-realization. And then this non-dual integration of your awakening, what is that besides the same process that what you're revealed by entheogens, it's the same thing. And so that's why people recommend concentration, meditation, entheogens, self-inquiry, who am I, this type of stuff. So that's the first question I highly recommend um, intelligently, um, wisely um, using entheogens, especially at microdose level to just blast off. Let's get, let's get to the second and third questions and then you can pick up and ask follow-ups. Um, cool, so second question, Jason Reza Giorgiani, very cool guy, I like him a lot. Um, I think he's really smart. I think he's a great synthesis. I think he's a great synthesis of science and spirituality. Um, I also feel like 
Um, he has a great take on history. And I think that that's very crucial to understand the patterns of human dynamics and how they've emerged as well as where they're heading to. Um, I feel like, um, I feel like sometimes it's really difficult to sort of get out of a worldview, which is sort of that, um, there is this battle between light and dark, and we absolutely have to empower the light. And it's all about the light and it's all about all of this stuff, the type of stuff. And so, um, to transcend even that battle and to just recognize that, yes, there is a flux between the energies of separation and contraction and ego, and as well as the energy of unity and oneness and prosperity um, that are at in dynamical play and dance right now, but to not get overly attached and contracted about that dance. It's a fucking dance. That's what it is. It's not something for you to contract down to one side and be like, fuck all of you guys. And that's always going to lead you just to more misery, just to more suffering. Um, so it's already a cosmological phenomenon of awakening. And it was really cool playing with Jason Reza Giorgiani, smart guy, great synthesis, thinking about great things about science and futurism and the integration of spirituality, super cutting edge there. But I did notice a little bit of that distinct sort of uh, essence to it as well in, in our conversation that I mentioned earlier. Third question is around how do we synthesize and distill the essence of the nature of reality to the masses most optimally? So I do think it has a lot to do with parsing for signal and truth. I think that's really the ultimate way to do it. You parse for signal, you parse for truth, and then you disseminate that, you synthesize it and disseminate it through the most elegant explain like I'm five art and animation and VR and pedagogy that awakens the collective. So if you just take like Michelangelo Sistine Chapel and you turn that into the modern day synthesis of science and spirituality and entrepreneurship and art and all of the most profound cutting edge fields of, of everything that's emerging. And then you, again, you refine it into explain like I'm five. So a young person can get it. And then you put that through VR and all of the different pedagogy technologies that are emerging and becoming available. I think that's pretty much the bingo ding 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 but you gotta parse for signal you gotta parse for truth if you don't have a fire under your ass for truth you are missing out that's the number hey, one say, thing say more about this parse for truth say more yes so yeah beautiful i would say that that's the number one thing just in reality in general the entire game of reality is all about parsing for truth it's all about as you emerge it's all about going like who am i what am i doing here and the faster that you do that turn to the most highest signal the most highest truth um, and that you absolutely stay hyper open that and you stay hyper open to deconstructing yourself, which is the hardest thing for people to stay open to is because nobody wants to dissolve their little their little moth of separation into the flame of the infinite singularity that if you stay open and if you deconstruct yourself and if you parse for signal, like you have this massive fire under your ass, without a doubt, you are not only going to find the most cohesive, beautiful signal of truth available in reality, but then all that's going to happen is you're just going to start being not only so love and light around unity, around your own energy sphere and other people, but you're going to notice that your moment to moment experience is going to be from a God realized place or from a source realized place or from a void or infinity realized place that your entire life is going to be like that. Your, your level of subtlety with the field is going to be so strong. This is something that I'm like really refining and learning right now is what we've been calling field dynamics. Right. So it's field dynamics is how do these conscious agents play in the field? Well, it's based on different levels of perception. You could say everything is already a diamond. That's the unity. That's the suchness. That's the homogeneity. Everything is already a diamond. But yet simultaneously, the diamonds are gradiented based on these seven, you could say, 
colors of the rainbow, the seven chakras. And so some diamonds are really red and orange and yellow in this third density style consciousness, very coarse consciousness, very difficult to talk to because all they do is talk about separation and ego and identity and contractions. Very difficult. I was there. Same thing. Then you sort of open up that green chakra, you open, you get into the heart, you get into more of these love light, like hippie stuff, hippies, 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 cool phase, cool phase, but recognize that it's a phase because what you have, what you have up next for you is you have blue indigo violet. When you start really becoming wise, you become more of a sage, you know, you learn how to distance yourself from hippies. And when you learn how to distance yourself from hippies, what it gives you is it gives you more surgical levels of precision consciousness. It's just unprecedented. Um, hippies will hold space for ego. Wisdom will not hold space for ego, right? That's a very simple difference. And so now once you start getting really into this like six density level consciousness, when in density by density, we mean spiritual mass, like density of love and light, everything is just light dancing with itself electromagnetically. These, this quantum field theoretic uh, electrodynamical play that everything is. So when you get to these higher densities of love, light, consciousness, love, light, awareness, you actually begin tasting more and more direct experience, moment to moment, mirror consciousness, God consciousness. You become a servant truly to that. You become, you, you shift more and more away from just everything is about hugging trees and everything's about cuddle puddles and you shift more and more towards, I'm going to understand the field like a surgeon. I'm going to watch as people who have words leave their mouth. I'm going to watch what density of consciousness they're speaking from. And that's a whole different ball game. We're talking about like the world's leading spiritual athletes, basically consciousness athletes, like Olympic level athletes perform at these six, seventh density levels of consciousness. Like, can you perform from all that is perpetually? Can you perform from source perpetually and literally watch as conditioning leaves people's mouths and then learn how to provide them with a very unique reflection that helps them upgrade their consciousness from whatever three, let's say third, 3.5 density to something that's closer to fourth density consciousness, just by a little reflection of a profound question for them to go, oh, fuck, I didn't see it that way before. And then boom, they unravel a bit more of their conditioning, a bit more of their contraction gets liberated into freedom. And that's what the whole game of reality is about. It's contracted energies liberating themselves into freedom. Everything's already a diamond. Everything's already the suchness. Yet at the same time, there's the appearance of separation, ego, contraction that's liberated into God, back into its true nature, back into infinity, etc. So that's the uh, expansion on truth and signal and why having a fire under your ass and flaming it no matter what, that's, that's, that's your lifeline to the creator. That's your lifeline to God. It's your lifeline to infinity. It's your lifeline to dissolving into nothingness and to emptiness, which then gives you the ability to emerge into the field purely, purely, purely. Love you. Thanks for catalyzing this. It's so beautiful. You answered all my questions. Nice. I don't have anything to ask anymore. You picked up on the most important part, truth and signal. And then you asked me a follow up on that. Do you feel similarly? I agree with you completely. I agree completely with everything you said. Um, the truth you're talking about is this essence we were talking about in our previous conversation. There's an essence 
there's a soul, there is a like the suchness, the isness there. So what I'm interested, what I'm curious about, let's let's say we, we take everything you just shared the last few minutes about parsing the tr for truth and sharing the truth, sharing or being. What's interesting for me is to decipher, reveal. Interesting, you use the word diamonds, I use the word vessels, okay? So I'm, I'm kind of doing a parallel between our cosmologies and this is something we talked about in our previous conversation, how do cosmologies talk with each other and illuminate different aspects of who they are through, through another cosmology? Because you cannot illuminate yourself by yourself. In a way, you have to be almost like shown, reflected, engaged in, danced with. So as we're talking, as our perspectives are talking, um, I was looking for the parallels between, between our cosmologies. And then what, what excites me, what, what truth is looking to be revealed through me right now in, these, in this period is could we, could we reveal principles? Could we reveal uh, ways of dancing in this? Could we reveal processes, cycles? And if we, if we are revealing, then what are we revealing? Uh, what is, the, what is the, the, the data? Data, not a good word. What is, what is the truth that is revealed? And, and is truth, does truth have principles fundamental particles, fundamental processes, fundamental dynamics. I'm, I'm curious about that. Beautiful. Let's play with the word principles first, and then let's play with dance second, and then let's, let's see what unfolds from that. But I liked those to start. So, um, so first of all, you can just totally just start directly from simultaneity and just say that, yeah, this is an absolute ineffable mystery. And there's without a doubt, a 0% chance that this entire, that infinity, absolute infinity, that it can be mapped, that we can in within Grand Theft Auto, which is like this game that we're in, that we're going to be able to map the PlayStation 5 that's playing infinite games. You can't. You just can't. And so, A, it's an absolute mystery. Cool. So we're actually not going to be able to make an exact map. Okay, cool. Yet at the same time, we can make as close of a map as we can to what this Grand Theft Auto universe simulation is. And so we may as well, we may as well, although there is just suchness, there's just isness, and we just describe these things as fucking subatomic particles and mind body spirit complexes that are dancing on planets and shit, that those are just words and concepts and ideas. And yeah, they're useful. Of course, they're useful. That's what enables us to have this call at 4 p.m. If we didn't have fucking time, we wouldn't, it's great because it, reality is timeless. Time is an illusion. True. But at the same time, time is just how we measure the cycle of an earth day. And now we're able to meet at 4 PM and fucking have a call. Like, so you really have to have the simultaneity where you can see the usefulness. Like if you didn't understand anything at all about electromagnetism, if you didn't get anything at all about how to be able to send information across fucking air that then, and if we didn't have brilliant people that studied that relentlessly and built technology that 
was able to do that, bruh, you couldn't do shit for eight hours a day that you normally do on your phone and your computer. So there's obvious great utility to this as well. And so it's just the simultaneity of what I call map and no map, right? So map and no map. Do you, can you hold both at the same time? Can you not become attached and obsessed to the to, to all of the different ways that quantum field theory works and that you sit there as a physicist going, but you don't even know, you're not even aware that you're God while you're doing it. It's so stupid. It's hilarious. It's funny as fuck. And then there's all the spiritual people that are like, oh, bro, I'm God, I'm God, I'm God. And then they have no idea how to meet the planet's basic needs. So this is, the, this is the game that we're playing. Do you know how to do both simultaneously? Can you meet the sustainable development goals? Can you understand science and entrepreneurship while at the same time understanding yourself as God, as absolute nothingness and absolute infinity? Can you understand the suchness that is right in front of your face? Can you understand this is the mystery talking to itself? It's not Atlas talking to Natalie. It's the mystery talking to itself. It's infinity talking to itself. It's the dance that's happening. So the first thing is the simultaneity of map and no map. And the second thing is that, so that's for principles, right? So the first things with principles, map and no map, parse for truth. No attachments at all, but maximize human potential. Simple stuff. And get the fuck out of your little silo and just blast yourself into the suchness that's right in front of your face. So the first word was principles. And remind me what the second word was again. Dance. The dance. And we mentioned that a little bit already. Okay. So these mm -hmm. three these three are the, are the core principles. Parse for truth, maximize human potential, map, no map. Oh, those are cool. Yeah, those are cool. For sure, for sure, um, parse for truth, probably one. Um, and maximize human potential, for sure. Yeah, map, no map is good, but those, those two are really high up. Parse for signal, parse for signal, and maximize human potential. The more people that are maximized in their human potential, the more that we can parse for truth together collectively yes. yes so it, it makes perfect sense so listen because english is not my first language tell me what is parse for truth what, what what is the word parse that's cool that's cool um so parse just means finding signal so when you have a bunch of you mentioned the word earlier data right you have a bunch of data just take Take a simple example, like you have a book, you have a big fucking book and the book has fucking 200 pages in it. And what are you doing? What are you doing? First of all, do you know how to sit your ass down for eight straight hours and read a book? Because if you don't bitch, you're losing at the game. Maybe that's a really true thing. I've been doing it for thousands of years. It's one of the easiest ways to become awake fast. So first of all, you have to find which book to read, which is itself is parsing. Parsing is going through the millions of books and finding the book that has the greatest signal first. What's so, the synonym for parsing? Finding? That's good. Finding is good. What else? Par parsing means also sifting through noise. Okay. Yeah, you're sifting through noise to find signal. You're sifting through data to find what screams in highest resonance. So- Got it, got it, I got it, I got it. So now, so I'm going back to the principles. We're, we're not moving yet to the second one, to the cool. dance. We <laughs> mentioned it a little bit earlier too, we, in the first expansion of the first concept, a bit on dance already. So but yeah, I like how you boiled it down to parsing for truth, and maximizing human potential maximizing human potential and i really want to give a shout out to vivian ming who in 2015 was the first that introduced me to maximize human potential as like an aphorism something that you could like a mantra something that you could repeat over and over again to really guide your attention towards service to others towards yes. maximizing human potential yeah yeah beautiful beautiful so now how do you how do you define truth or how how do you see truth how do you express truth what is truth for you what is real what is real what is truth what is real what is real what is real means that which does not change everything is impermanent 
absolutely everything is impermanent flux. You could even say that the only permanence is impermanence itself. And there is just one thing that does not change, and that is simply comprehension. That's the only thing that doesn't change. It's the black hole that comprehends everything. This comprehension, is, you mean awareness, consciousness? Yeah, you could use those words as well, but I like to specifically go directly to comprehension. I like specifically, you could say the power to know, you could say the formlessness that's constantly interpreting everything, the infinite reality that is the very source of God itself, the infinite reality that gave birth to this God universe and that is now comprehending it. So the infinite mystery that gave birth to the God universe itself that is now undergoing this dance of one of infinite possibilities is itself what is most real. So what is hearing my voice right now is what is most real. What is comprehending my voice right now is what is most real. Not a person, not Atlas, not Natalie, because Atlas and Natalie will go. But what is comprehending behind and beyond the characters? That which nothing can ever alter, that which is most real, that is truth. That which comprehends infinite creation, that which comprehends infinite impermanence is another way to say it. What comprehends infinite impermanence? If you're infinite, you will never come to the end of exploration. And yet there is something that comprehends the infinite exploration. It's what we've been. It's what we'll always be. The furthest back you can go, the absolute furthest back you can go, the absolute furthest inward you can go. And so truth is that. Truth is that which simply is comprehending what is happening right now. That's reality. And everything in front of that, everything in front of that, you could call unreal, which is this Atlas character talking to this Natalie character. But it's also real at the same time. And that's the game. But what is most real is that's what that which is comprehending it all? Excuse this me. When you when you when you make love, what does it have to do with comprehension? When you're making love, when you making touch love, your, yes. when you yes, what, what comprehension has nothing. I mean, I'm just looking at what you're saying. I mean, I can see. I can talk about awareness. I can talk about. Uh, do, you, do you like the word experience more? Because. Because comprehension for me gets very in the in the five, six, seven, and beyond chakras. And uh, what about the eminence? You know, we're, we're talking about transcendence, but what, what about the actual? Like when you're taking a shower and you're experiencing or feeling the water on your skin. Yeah, yes, yeah. use the word experiencing. Yeah. Okay, but but see, so I'm I'm going back to truth. I'm I'm not I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet in terms of satisfaction. I'm not satisfied. So so. You mentioned at the beginning, you said truth is that that does not change. Then you talked about the one that comprehends, the what comprehends infinite exploration. But see, in, 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 in installment, you have perspectives. It's all, and you're very attached based on my listening to you. And you're very much the, the, the cosmic, the primordial, the, the essential perspective. But well, you can, you can take now, we can both take a perspective of an ant and have this conversation from a perspective of an ant. And it still will not, um, will not, it, it, if it's truth, it has to give us the same results. So what am I trying to say? The same thing that's comprehending what I'm saying right now is the same thing that's comprehending in every single one of us. That's exactly. it. That's, exactly, that's, exactly. That's, that's it. And oh, you can my, my. play on the word comprehending, you can play on the word awareness, you can play on the word experience, you can play on the word the power to know. It really doesn't matter. It's a fucking word. When, when you take a shower, tell me the truth there. Yeah. Your experience of taking the shower and feeling the water, 
Like, let's say after you're, you're after a flag. You, you have to have the simultaneity where you both can feel the experience, the indescribability of the experience or the comprehension, the awareness of taking a shower. And yet at the same time, be so absolutely transcended from the dream substrate itself that you don't even have the experience of taking the shower. I, yes, exactly. So, so, so my question is beautiful, beautiful. The, the holding the multiple layers or the multiple levels yeah. of, of, of this moment of this isness suchness, but then from that, what is truth? So there's, you, you have to figure it out for yourself. No, tell me, tell me, I, I'm serious. Like, um, but here's the thing though, right? Um, no concepts, none of this conversation is it. It's just not it. So. I know, but we talked about map, no map. I know, I know there's map and territory. We, well, we can we'll never- also, We'll also just words, even words. Yes. Even us just talking right now is almost probably less it than just being silent. Right. And that's why it's really just up to the fire of truth under the ass of the individuated unit, the individuated expression, because if the fire under the ass of the individuated expression is bright enough, then it will itself discover its true nature and it will then recognize the hilarity of all of these concepts because we spent half an hour talking about parsing for truth and about signal and about um, the importance of, of maximizing human potential and having a map and not having a map at the same time and the difference between comprehension and awareness and nothing and everything and the field and suchness and these different densities of consciousness. And they're great concepts. They're great ideas. They've helped me so much and they help me serve others that are seeking so much. So again, it's simultaneity with concepts and no concepts. And so this is just, uh, this is just like, you got to figure it out for yourself more than anything. Um, I, this is always the number one thing is figure it out for yourself more than anything else. Like what is the rank order of, of what is at the top of your perception or awareness? And if the number one thing is not truth, then you're stuck in the illusion. So if truth, which for the vast majority of people that are in third density, including myself in matrix level consciousness, including myself in the past, truth is number 15 on their rank order if your number one desire is not truth you will be stuck in the matrix and so the only thing that shifts you into this state is direct experience of it yourself direct realization of it yourself which is done completely by shifting what is at the top of the rank order of your priorities. Nothing beats truth. Nothing, nothing, nothing. The whole point of this game is for you to surrender to the fact that nothing beats truth being at the top of your perception. The second that you surrender all of your other bullshit desires that are all Maya or the illusion or the intoxication that are reeling you outward, thinking that you're going to get peace and happiness from relationships and substances and experiences. This is why the word experience is, again, it's very tricky. You can't necessarily use the word experience as well for the ultimate nature because experiences is so deeply intertwined with Maya, so deeply because everything's in, in third density consciousness, all much of it is about experience seeking. I'm going to get a substance. I'm going to get a relationship. I'm going to get an experience. I'm going to get something that's going to validate my unworthiness, my identity, contraction, separation. And through that process, then I will be filled. Then I will be whole. Then I will be worthy. Then I will have happiness and peace. And so that's why experience is tricky, but comprehension you can't argue with it. 
I can't argue with it. There's something that's comprehending my voice. It's so mysterious and so ineffable. And it's the only thing that's shared in our essence. And so I go with that. That's what my realization has been. Many other realizations have confirmed this as well. It's excellent. It's super fun. It's super beautiful. It's a big game. It's a big dance that this all is. And again, what is at the top of your rank order of priorities? Is it truth? Because if it's not truth, you're stuck. If it is truth, you're awakening. That's it. It's the only game in town is putting truth at the top of your rank order of priorities. It's the only game in town, realizing the one recognizing the one, awakening from the dream, awakening from the illusion, recognizing your true nature, and then coming from that true nature perpetually over and over again. It, it's your job. It becomes your job to come from the true nature over and over again. And your job as in, in a great way, because it's the only thing that's left to do. Once you pierce this veilless veil and recognize your true nature, guess what? There's nothing left to do. You can't do anything anymore. I can't go experience seek anymore. Literally, I have this moment happen to me consistently now where I just, I go like, uh, and then I go, uh, and then I just go, uh, because there's just nowhere to go. I can't go do something that's going to make me anything anymore. Nothing. So now it's just, I'm already the absolute infinite reality. I am it. And so now what happens is, just the field shows up to me more and more. And the field just shows up and it, it inquires. The field dynamic itself presents itself to me and then knock, knock, knock the will, the agency that is located in the mind-body-spirit complex that's individuated, that is seeking wholeness, that is seeking upgrades in perception, self-realization, God-realization comes knocking at the Atlas mind, body, spirit complex door in the field, and then ding dong, and then Atlas just responds, just totally more and more purely from absolute sourcefulness in service to that mind, body, spirit complex individuation awakening. That's the only game that's left in town now. And then it's just purifying that. It's just purifying that more and more. Can Atlas get every single last bit of identity contraction separation dissolved? Totally dissolved. Can Atlas become 100% God? Purely, absolutely purely. And that's just what this is. That's what's happening right now. And it's beautiful. And it, again, it's a, it's a realization and then it's an abiding. It's an abiding and it's a field dynamics. It's, it's surgery. It's precision consciousness. Love you, Natalie. Thank you for instigating this. This is so beautiful. I'm so this grateful. Beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I, and I want to ask you again. I want to ask you again. What is truth? Just that which is real. That which is most real, that which does not change, that which hears my voice. That's it. The suchness is dancing. So is truth, the suchness, isness, this moment? Yes, yes, yes. So here, this is, the, we're, we're talking in the, um, we're talking in the highest ballpark possible right now. At least in this dimension, to this extent of infinity, we're talking at the highest comprehension level right now of what is truest, what is most real. The very dance of suchness, the very dance of isness, the very dance of God, that this all is, all possibilities dancing, is the absolute highest God self realization. And you could say that that is it. Totally. You could say that that is it. But then you ask, what is comprehending that? What is aware of God's dance? What is aware of the dance of suchness? What is aware of the dance of the interpenetration of allness, of all that is? It's just an aspect of that, I believe. The comprehension is an aspect. The suchness, isness, this, 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 this is the truth. The one that comprehends, the one that experiences, the one that dances. It's just an aspect of that. You understand? So, and, and when you use the word comprehend, it's, it serves, it serves your, your perspective and it feels right for you. It resonates with you. Um, 
for me, experience is way more than just going and getting something. Experience is this moment. This moment is arising between us. And as it's arising, the beauty, the gentleness, the color, the taste of our experience together, of the blue around us, the blue on your shirt, the blue on the, this painting, the blue on my dress. Yeah, but you're describing right now, right? You're yes. describing experience, right? Yes. And describing experience is a fascinating and important and beautiful thing because you can be God describing the dance. You can be God experiencing the dance, right? But then I ask you the question, what is comprehending the dance itself? What is comprehending you describing? It's an aspect of me. It's an aspect. It's here. It's perception. It's perspective. It's just an aspect. It's an aspect of... It's beautiful. I would just challenge that you persistently have, have said that it's here, it's here, it's here. And so for me, it's not there. Just saying, for me, it's not here. For me, this is not a above the head here-ness. It's literally every single possible subatomic bit is made of love and that this is it dancing and that it's not here, it's this. Just this. The comprehension, the comprehension. It's, it's, it's an aspect of the, the truth. The comprehension is just an aspect. I, I agree about love. I agree. Cool. Well, I would say that comprehension is the only thing that doesn't come and go. That's another way to say it. Comprehension is the only thing that does not come and go. And it's not a thing. And that's why people overlook it. That's why so few people have access to truest reality, truest it, nature. So comprehension is awareness of awareness, is awareness of the suchness, is the consciousness. You, you could say that awareness of suchness. You could say that, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, so you can have an experience and have an awareness of suchness and still take a shower and still... So what I'm trying to say that the comprehension is a quality, is an aspect, is a, is a... There you go. There you go. That which is aware of suchness. Go for that. That's okay. good. Okay. That which is aware of suchness, that which is aware of infinite creation, that which is comprehending everything endlessly forever. Eternity comprehending infinity. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh... But I love you so much. You're so good. I love your pokey pokiness. It's so good. It's so good. You can't just say that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because I've also learned that as well, is that I got to poke. I got to dig. I got to get in there. But at the same time, this is where we said earlier that it's all about the direct experience. It's all about the realization. Okay in one's own unique taste and journey. And we're going to have people that watch this and that the number one thing with this parsing for truth thing is all about your unique experience and realization with what the nature of reality is. That's why you're here. You are literally here as an expression of the one to burst through this veilless veil and awaken and you're going to have a unique taste, a unique style of awakening. And that's, and it's never been done before. Yeah. So welcome. And to this specifically, because this is the only thing, only thing that will give you exactly what you seek that underlies everything that underlies everything. Everything is made up of what we're talking about. Everything's made up of what we're talking about. Everything that you seek externally is located right here in your heart. It's already here. It's already love dancing with itself. And you're a unique expression. And that's very important too, because non-duality very frequently just takes a shit on the individual. And it's very important to have simultaneity, to know that, yeah, 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 it's suchness dancing. Yes, 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 we're aware of that. Very good, very good. Yet there is this apparent Natalie character and this apparent Atlas character. And it's beautiful for that to be the case. It's beautiful that this Atlas character has these unique 
attributes and that that the Atlas character did this thing and that this caused him to awaken and that Natalie did that thing and caused her to awaken and that these people do their things cause them to awaken. Nobody's got this exact same signature. You got this little thumbprint. Like enjoy that. Don't just poo poo all over individuation. Like it's cool. Like in Natalie has ensoulment. Atlas has simulation. Like these are, yeah. these are, you can't say that they're the same thing only. They're both the same, made up of the same suchness. And yet they're also different, unique expressions of it. And okay. if you can't have that simultaneity, you haven't fully realized. Great. So, so my question is um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, e I want to go back to how we started talking about um, broadcasting signal of truth in different ways, VR, animation, education, movies. So. Cool. So let's take an example like cosmogenesis or abiogenesis. Just take your eyeballs and just put them at either the Big Bang, if you want to go there, you don't have to, or at a biogenesis, meaning the first formation of a cell on planet Earth. You can just go there because there's still all this speculation around Big Bang. Just go directly to a biogenesis itself. Go there. The first cell on planet Earth. And put your fucking eyeballs there. That's it. That's the whole game. Now what? The cell becomes two, the two become four, it becomes thousands of species that then also become millions of different species and then go on to land and then fucking birth conscious agents talking to itself. You're the whole thing. You're the entire dance itself. And it's all vibratory. It's all energy dancing. And so that's so simple. It can be boiled down into a little minute long VR experience where it's like, vroom, you pop into the first cell and then you're like, you're it all. And it's all dancing with itself. And then, so these are the types of things that can be put into pedagogy, even into little TikTok videos as well. It can be put all over the place in terms of media and content. And it's very exciting because it's so simple, but at the same time, I do see it as a sort of like a, like a digital Sistine chapel at the same time, because it's, it's a little bit more, um, to take everything that we just talked about in this 50 minute conversation and to put it into a 15 second TikTok video or a 15 second VR experience is, uh, it's a great challenge. It's very beautiful, but at the same time, I do see it being like a Sistine Chapel style level of artwork that enables people to really walk through the, whoa, like, this is what this all is? Like, mm. this is what nice. it's here for? Yeah. Nice. So, so tell me, tell me the projects you're working on right now. Or, or what's, what's next for simulation for Atlas? What's next or what is? Yeah. So everything is under igniting global awakening. So you can call that IGA, Igniting Global Awakening. Um, and there's an endless amount of ways to do this. There's an endless amount of ways to maximize human potential, an endless amount of ways to assist people in their meditation, in their concentration, in their realizations. And there's an endless amount of ways to create maps and to also encourage people to not have maps and also to see the love light unity dancing with itself. So for me specifically, it, a lot of my attention right now is directed towards igniting global awakening and specifically through both the No Limit Society. So it's something I'm working really closely with right now with Bentinho Massaro and the team here. And also I'm um, continuing to, of course, build out simulation. And I'm very, very excited about that. We also just published, a, I published my third book. I co-authored it with my very close friend, Skyra, a very close brother of mine. And he and I published a book called What is I? And it's a very simple book on self-inquiry that just simplifies source in a very adult children style dynamic. 
So it's all just honed in on igniting global awakening and it's doing it through a diverse amount of um, aspects to this. And um, it's actually quite uh, beautiful how many different ways that it's unfolding. And also I highly encourage our audience to also check out the interview with Natalie in Solment and check out her work because it's just basically taking exactly what we talked about and also visualizing it really simply and profoundly and uniquely, uniquely mm -hmm. is the key. And so this is why we vibe really well and that we're, yeah. Thank you. So, so look, we have just a few more minutes left and I want to talk to you more, maybe next time. Cool. Specifically about the No Limit Society, the building, the simulation. Can you say a few more, like we have maybe two more minutes and then we'll sign off? Cool. Yeah, what does it look like to have a, a collective of like-hearted souls that are all spiritually awakened and that are precise with consciousness in the field dynamics of serving it, pure service to others with awakening the field as it seeks to know itself? Um, yeah, that's in essence it. And it's super exciting. Um, because it's just, it's like fucking Hogwarts, really. It's like Hogwarts. It's like, it's like the Vikings. It's like that level. It's like Navy SEALs meets Hogwarts, uh, meets Vikings. And it's all a call to honor. It's a call to duty. Beautiful. It's Beautiful. a call to joy, a call to play, a call as a free agent of infinity to maximize the potential of this creation to awaken and then to serve your other selves awakening so, Amazing. Yeah. beautiful beautiful atlas wow i love you i love you amazing amazing thank you for letting me poke you thank you for letting me toss you around like a seaweed i think you enjoyed it Anytime. and you you did it pretty well and I want to have a continuation, so we'll talk about next uh, next okay. interview, next meeting. We will. And, uh, and yeah. I love you. Thank you. Love you so much. How beautiful this was together. So nice. Wow. Thank you. Cool. All right. Let me uh, let me pause this. Yes.